Hi guys. So today something a little bit different. We're looking at this ice machine. I thought you might just like to see how these things work and how the ice is produced. This is um, a machine that I bought recently and uh, it's a second hand one. It needed a good clean. It had some faults uh, which I've repaired. I'll, I'll show you inside um, what it was that was wrong with this machine. Primarily just wanted to show you how the ice is produced in these machines. Um, there are a number of machines of the same um, type that look exactly the same to be honest and just different makes. This one is a nice ice, uh, the model number is an N26 and uh, yeah there are, there are a few different models that are very similar to this. The ice is produced and ends up in this bin here. It holds six kilograms of ice and uh, it automatically stops when this bin is full. But um, let's uh, show you inside this. So here we are inside the machine. Now the way this works is that there is a refrigerating element here, this chrome element here. This works in just the same way as the refrigerant in your home freezer. And it comes in one side, the fluid running round, it goes down to the compressor and the heat is exchanged uh, in the heat exchanger at the bottom. This element here during operation will get very cold. And you can see here the uh, these elements here that are pointing down, these dip into water. So you'll have this bath full of water, these elements go down into the water and get cold and the water around those elements freezes into an ice cube. So the ice cube ends up with a they're called thimble shaped ice cubes, so a hole in the center where this uh, element was. And then what happens is the, um, I assume that the condenser in the bottom, the motor reverses direction so that the hot side of the fluid comes back through this element just briefly and uh, melts the ice off the, um, these elements here. So the ice clings to the element while it's cold and then when it's reversed this will get temporarily warmer just for a few seconds, enough for the ice to melt and drop off these and then the cycle starts again. So the way that this detects that the ice is ready to come off, where the, you know, the ice cubes have got large enough, is using this plastic mechanism here. Now this spins around the whole time. And I don't think that disturbing the water with this is, um, has any function. I think the only reason this exists is to detect the size of the ice. And the way it does that is that there's a motor here that spins this round and it's got a clutch on here so even though the motor's spinning if this stops it doesn't stop the motor spinning. You see the motor's still spinning there but this is stopped. And what happens is when the ice gets large enough, when the ice expands inwards like this, it gets to a point where this can't, it jams uh, this mechanism and stops. And there's a little Hall effect sensor here. So this detects that this is still rotating. As soon as the machine detects that this has stopped, then it goes into the routine that delivers the ice and knocks the ice off these, uh, off these spindles. But let's, uh, let's show you this in operation. So when I turn it on, the first thing it's going to do, it goes through a little self-test to make sure there's no ice in this tray already. And then once that's done, it will fill it up with water through this nozzle here. Now there's a little um, detector here, water height detector. So it's very simple. There's, there's a control mechanism in this box here, there's a little circuit that detects um, what state these sensors in, but it's quite simple. Um, all it's doing is detecting that the water's filled up, then it goes to the next step, which is to start the motor up, start the refrigerant, and then it just sits there for, I think it takes about 12 minutes before the ice is made, and then when it's large enough, this will can will jam, it will detect that it's stopped, then it reverses the refrigerant around here to um, melt the ice off 
these spindles and then it drops into the basket which then tips into the bin. Anyway, let's, um, let's show you this in operation. So we will turn the water on, turn the unit on. Now the first thing it will do is go through its self-test just to make sure that there's no ice currently in there. So this is the basket lowering down. If there was ice in there this would then drop into the bin below. This is moved down via this cam wheel here. So this basket's now coming back up. And as soon as this is in position, it will fill with water. Now with these detectors here, this will detect the water level, so as soon as the water reaches these two terminals, it knows it's full. And then this motor starts up. If you look down the centre there, you can imagine those ice is forming on those terminals at the bottom as it gets to wide enough, as this ice gets big enough, it will jam this and stop it rotating. The, uh, there's the little hall effect sensor there, it's a little magnet rotating on this cam. As soon as it detects this stopped then it will go to the next stage of the process. Now this takes about, about 15 minutes or so to uh, produce the ice. So we'll leave this running and we'll, uh, we'll come back and show you the next step of the operation. Few controls on the front here. There's uh, obviously the run indicator has a fault. Ice full, so that inside here in the bin, there is a, a sensor here, which when the ice gets up to that, I guess this is a temperature indicator. Um, it will know that this bin is full of ice and it stops the production of ice. As soon as you take some ice out and it lowers it down, it will automatically start back up again. Uh, water low. I assume that just means if, there's, uh, if it's trying to fill it up with water and doesn't reach the level indicator, if the water's uh, offline, you'll get an error there. So this is already cold to touch this side. Okay, well we'll leave this running for a few minutes and uh, we'll come back. So this has been just a couple of minutes now. Just wanted to show you, you can see the ice forming on this pipe as it gets colder. And this ice will uh, travel around as this whole element gets cold. That noise you can hear is uh, a fan, a cooling fan in the back. So when the compressor gets too hot, there's a cooling fan which uh, just air cools that motor. Just one thought I had is, thinking about it, I think these do actually um, 
have an effect on the ice when they're moving around. So I just thought if this, uh, if the water wasn't moving in this tray, if it was just still, it would just cool down and perhaps all freeze over on the top. So I guess that the, uh, the spinning arms here do stop that freezing over. Um, and it's just contained on the on the, the terminals that are sticking into the water. You can see that the ice is slowly coming round here, it's just slowly getting colder. Again, this is another couple of minutes on from the last time. And the ice is melted off these terminals and it dumps it into the tray. There is still some water left in the bottom of the tray and that just comes out of a drain at the back of the machine. Um, now if this was in a, a retail environment or it was being used 24-7, I expect there's quite a bit of water over time that would get lost, so I don't know what they would do in that case, whether it gets recycled or put back into the tank. Maybe they have some kind of filter system. Um, all I've done on mine is, this is the, uh, the condensation pump from the combi boiler, which is here. Um, we're in the basement here so there's no drain, I've got to pump the water up uh, out of the room. So I just put the drain of this into my condensation pump, so as soon as this dumps any water uh, this pump will fire up and get rid of it. see the ice forming around these terminals now that are in the water. You can see why they're called thimbles. It's like the shape of a thimble and they've got the uh, hole in the centre. You can see as soon as that gap gets narrow enough as soon as the ice builds up and stops these fingers going round, then uh, the next stage can happen. Because this side always gets colder first, the ice always builds up to a, a bigger size on this side than it does on this side. You can see that there's not as much ice formed here. Now they, they do produce ice on this side, um, but it's always larger on this side. I think it might have been a better idea if you just had one of these detecting the size of the ice perhaps on this side. But um, it works. So you can hopefully see there that the ice is almost at the right size now. You can see that it's going to stop that plastic wheel soon. So I can hear it just starting to catch now, this plastic. So I expect any moment now that will stop. And then you'll see the icy tube here sort of melt as it uh, melts the ice cubes off. Okay, you can see it defrosting. The ice cubes now dropping off. And now the basket is dropping the water and the ice cubes down into the next section.
that other noise you can hear there, that's my condensate pump, uh, just getting rid of that water. And then the cycle starts again, the basket comes back up, it will fill up with water, and it will start the cycle again. This is the ice that's produced. You see the hole in the center. I actually think this works well, um, especially with drinks, because uh, there's more surface area to the ice in the glass. And this area here is refrigerated, but it's not at freezing temperature. I think it's just above freezing. And that way, all the ice doesn't stick together, because the ice comes in here wet. If it was uh, below freezing, it would all just uh, stick together as one big lump, but it remains uh, as separate ice cubes. And like I say, when it gets to the top here, six kilograms, it hits this temperature probe and uh, stops the production until the level has dropped. As I said, this needs a few small repairs. When I bought it, the um, water hose was damaged inside at the bottom of the unit. I had to replace that hose with a new one. Um, also the Hall Effect switch here, this piece had snapped off so the, uh, the actual frame had broken. Um, so I've remounted that. Uh, also it was very dirty in here, I think it had just been left. I think it was uh, probably in use and then it was just disconnected and left somewhere in the corner so there's a lot of dust and muck and cobwebs so the whole thing's been sanitized and cleaned out. There was also a break on this panel here, this uh, this frame, it had cracked at the bottom. I think someone had maybe over tightened the bearing in here for this wheel um, and it just split the plastic so I've glued that. It's working fine now. So I hope you found this video interesting. This might be useful for someone who has a fault with one of these machines and needs to troubleshoot it. Um, I suspect the mechanism in this machine is, is very similar to a lot of other ice machines. They're probably all pretty much identical, even the small countertop units. So um, the mechanism in here and the way it works, uh, you'll be able to apply that to other models. But uh, yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's quite interesting the way that works. So if you've liked the video, give it a like for me, and I will see you on the next one.